Okay, so we're back down in the orchard. Let's do a few more trees. I seem to be letting these winter jobs slip away from me a little bit because we had some bad weather and I've been a bit of a wimp and not going out and just doing a little bit every day, which is probably the best way to tackle something like this. So I want to get these orchard trees pruned because I've got lots of trees to plant. This one, we're going to just take out some of the middle growth. This tree's never really romped away, so I don't want to take too much from it, but a little bit of removing of growth will kind of stimulate it as well. So down here, We've got a bit of canker, I don't know if you can see. So I'm going to remove that lower branch there to start with. Let's remove any diseased wood or some of it. That one has as well. It's kind of pointless leaving a stub on like that. I must have left it for some fruit the year before. Take out these middle pegs and wall shoots. You see that one there? You see him just going up? We'll take that one out and then we'll knock off that far upright one. Maybe that one as well. The trick is to take some but not too much. I think that'll do that one. It's opened it up, got the nice kind of goblet shape, a little bit flat if anything actually, but it should now encourage some growth to come back on up. Next tree. Now this was the tree that was quite badly damaged last, not last year, the year before, from having too much fruit on it. And you can see here, it's got this kind of open wound. But I'm not too worried about that. The tree looks healthy enough. I could take that out. It takes a whole branch out. Should I take that out? It's going to make the tree very one-sided. But it will probably encourage a load of growth on this side, which might not be a bad thing. And we've got quite a nice branch going on up there, over there. So I wonder if that would give us a new point for a branch to grow on. So I'm going to reduce the weight of it anyway, and then we'll have a look at kind of what it looks like. I'll tell you what, that looks better. I might take this one out. Let's cross in over that way. Try and let some light to these branches, see if we can get some more shoots to come from it. Mm. There's a lot wrong with this tree. Like, even this bit here, it's too low, far too low. So I want to cut it across there. And then what I might do is, oh, I don't know. I'm an R about these things, don't you? That branch was just too low. Chickens peck the apples. And I can't get the scythe in. It's just weather. Right, I'm going to cut it. It's going to make an unbalanced tree for a couple of years. I'm going to take it off. I've already reduced the weight down to make the cut easier. Oh. Kind of horrible to see. But now with that stub, well not stub, that cut now, that should then produce some shoots and come into this relatively light area. It wants to fill all the light areas, so. I'm hoping that's done more good than harm. So we've got a pear tree here. Looks a bit of a mess. We'll just remove some from the middle. A load of suckers down at the base, so I'll cut them off as well. It's quite overshadowed and you can see that by the way it's leaning. So it leans quite heavily over and you can't blame it for that it's trying to go for the light but what i don't want is too much weight on the one side i'm going to leave that it needs a few years to get to where it's going to go now this tree here i'm going to leave i'm going to graph that one over at a later date it's never had nice apples on it
That's a quince, I'm going to leave that one as well. Always seems to struggle, gets that quince blight every year. Down here in the brambles, we've got a few trees, but they're not doing very good. We'll take a few branches. This tree's always suffered really badly with canker. So it's cutting out a few bits that I see. It's amazing, these are the same, oh, same age as the other trees up there. This one, it's looking pretty good. I do think you should take some off a tree every year. But it's obvious it's not romping away. So I think maybe it's worth just leaving that one for this year. Now this one's winter banana. Beautiful looking apple. But it's got some very upright growth to it. It always wants to grow straight upwards. So we're gonna take that out and not much more. A few little bits in the middle. And that one was overlapping another one. That'll do for that one. There's my Worcester, lovely early eating apple. And I'm liking the shape of this one. Now what we have got, and I've left it in, is this one down here. I think this one down here could come out now. And it's kind of got that shape then. I'm not gonna miss that branch. That one's looking all right, look. Kind of goblety. Yeah? Let's see what we want. Okay, next one. These, this is one of my favorites, the russet. The kids like look out for these apples every winter. Um, well, yeah, we eat them in the winter, so they love it. And they're better after a bit of storage. Not so great off a tree. Give them a couple of months in the shed. Absolutely great. There's not much to take off this one either. These middle branches, I think. We've got some low down ones over here. Just over there, look. I'll do that one. It's looking good. Okay, the other russet. Well, I got it. This was a replacement tree. And that is a discovery, which is another great early apple. Quite a reliable cropper. And I'm just gonna snip the ends off this one, just to kind of encourage it to grow. It's only been in two years, so it's just getting established. And stuff seems to take a while to kind of get its roots down here and then it romps away. Ah, now this one, there's one that is romping away. This is the other russet. You see the weeds have grown up through this one. I did try and clear it from the willow. It's all getting a bit close in. And I think I'll take this willow back a bit more this winter if I get a chance. But there's lots of water shoots in this one. Shoots in the middle. They all need to come out. And then on the far side, we've got a bit of upright growth. It needs to come out as well. This bit of growth is going straight out into where the tractor goes. And I think it's overshadowed by the two branches above it. It's worth taking the whole thing out. Ooh. And then from this side, you can see I've got a few uprighty bits. Quite a big branch to take out. So I think that'll do that tree now. It's kind of opened it up a bit more, reduced some of that top growth, lifted the canopy a little bit, made it a bit more goblety. So kind of like ticking all the boxes that we're trying to tick. So this tree needs a bit of love. I think it's an L star and it needs jacking back up. So I think we'll do that another day before we prune that one. Cause it's kind of on the wonk. And then the last one, 
one of my favorite taste of Ethan apples. It doesn't crop very reliably, but when it does, it's really worth it. This is called Christmas Pippin. And it's just delicious. Absolutely beautiful tasting. Like a Cox Orange Pippin, but better. Now again, doesn't need much off. Just a few in the middle, these tiny little branches in the middle. I could probably do this for my secateurs. Wow. Yeah, I think that's gonna do it for that one. So that's most of the trees done now. I've got trees in the coppice, around the garden, and in my kind of plum orchard, there's a few apple trees in there as well. But I'll do that in another video. They're younger trees, so kind of different approach maybe. But thanks for watching, and see you again next time.